The Skull by John Clausen. One night, in the middle of the night, while everyone else was asleep, Otilla finally ran away. Part one. Otilla ran and ran. She ran through trees and up hills. She ran for a long time, all through the night. Otilla had grown up in this forest, but after a while, the trees began to look different. They were getting closer together. Otilla kept running. As she ran, Otilla began to hear her name being called. She couldn't tell if it was someone's voice or the wind in her ears. Otilla! 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 Otilla suddenly tripped on a fallen branch and fell hard into the snow. She didn't get up. She could not run anymore. She listened for her name, but now it was quiet. Otilla lay in the snow and the dark and the quiet, and she cried. When she was done crying, she got up and began moving forward again. All at once, the tree stopped. She came out of the woods and into an open yard. In front of her, in the distance, was a very big, very old house. Otilla went up to the house. It looked abandoned, but when she tried to open the door, it was locked. She knocked loudly to see if anyone was inside, but nobody came to the door. Hello, she called out. Hello, someone answered. Otilla looked up to where the voice had come from. In a window above the door, she saw a skull looking at her. Part Two The skull moved himself a little so he could see better. Hello, he said again. Hello, said Attila. My name is Attila. I ran away, and I need a place to hide and rest. The skull was quiet for a moment. Then he said, I will come down and let you in, but only if you promise to carry me once I do. I am just a skull and rolling around is difficult for me. Otilla was quiet for a moment. Then she said, all right. The skull left the window. Otilla waited outside the door. She waited for a long time. It was very quiet. Then she heard some small scratching on the other side of the door. The latch turned and the door cracked open against the snow. The skull pushed the door open wider. Thank you, said Otilla. You're welcome, said the skull. Otilla picked him up. She had never picked up a skull before. Come in, said the skull. I will show you the house. All right, said Otilla. They walked into the hall. It is a nice house, said Otilla. Yes, said the skull. I have always liked it here. Have you lived here for a long time, said Otilla. Yes, said the skull. They went into a room. This is the fireplace room, said the skull. I come here to drink tea by the fire in the evenings. You make tea? said Otella. No, not anymore, said the skull. Can you make a fire, said Otella. No, said the skull. They were quiet. 
Is that you in the picture? said Otella. It used to be, said the skull. They went into the garden room. Ooh, I like this room, said Otilla. This is my favorite room, said the skull. Can you eat the pears, said Otilla. I can eat the ones that fall on the ground, but I can't reach the good ones on the branches, said the skull. I will get one for you, said Otilla. She held a pear for him, and he took a bite. The bite of pear went through him and fell onto the floor. Ah, delicious, said the skull. Thank you. They went into a room with masks hung on the walls. What are, what are these masks for, said Otella. I used to collect them, said the skull. Can you wear them, said Otella. They are just for show, said the skull. You are not supposed to wear them. They went downstairs. What is this room? said Otilla. This is the dungeon, said the skull. There is nobody in it now. What is this hole? said Otilla. That is a bottomless pit, said the skull. Otilla threw the core of her pear into the hole and listened. It did not make a sound. Do you want to see the tower? said the skull. All right, said Otilla. They climbed the steps up the tower. Does anyone else know about this house? said Otella. No, said the skull. You are the first person to find it in a very long time. They got to the top and walked out onto the balcony. You can see everything from here, said the skull. It's beautiful, said Otella. Careful, said the skull. The wall is not very high, and it is a long way down if you fall. They looked out over the forest. You said you ran away, said the skull. Yes, said Otilla. You don't want them to find you? No, said Otilla. I don't. The skull waited to see if she wanted to say any more, but she didn't. All right said the skull. Then he said, There is a big room I haven't shown you. How big? said Otilla. This is the biggest room I've ever seen, said Otilla. This is the ballroom, said the skull. It was for dancing. There were lots of dances here. I went to a dance once, said Otilla but it was not in a room like this. I did like the dancing though. I love dancing, said the skull. Otilla put her mask back on. She carried the skull to the middle of the ballroom. She held him to her face. Would you care to dance, sir? said Otilla. My lady, said the skull. They danced and danced and danced until it got dark. Part three. When it was dark, Otella made some tea and a fire in the fireplace room. Would you give me some tea, please? said the skull. Otella took a teacup and poured the tea through his mouth and onto the chair. Ah, nice and warm, said the skull. Thank you. You can spend the night here if you want to, said the skull. I do want to, said Otilla. There is something I should tell you, said the skull. Otilla put her tea down. There is a skeleton that comes here to this house, said the skull. It is a headless skeleton. It walks around the halls looking for me. When it finds me, it chases me. Has it ever caught you? said Otilla. No, said the skull quietly, but I am not as fast as I used to be. Otilla looked closely at the skull. You don't want it to catch you? No, whispered the skull. I don't. 
Will it come tonight? said Attila. The skull looked at the fire. It comes every night, he said. Otilla looked at the fire, too. All right, she said. She kept looking at the fire, and she started to think. When it was time to go to sleep, the skull showed Otilla to a bedroom. It was a nice room. There was a big, comfortable bed and some pajamas for her to wear. Otilla liked the pajamas. We should try to get some sleep, said the skull. The skeleton will come soon enough. Otilla blew out the light. They slept deeply and peacefully for a long time. The house was dark and very quiet. Until, in the middle of the night, a headless skeleton opened the bedroom door. From somewhere in the skeleton's chest came a voice. But it only shouted one thing. Give me that skull! I want that skull! The skeleton ran into the room. It was faster than Otilla had expected. She had just enough time to grab the skull before it reached him. The skeleton pulled at the skull, trying to get him away from her. But Attila held on tight. She did not let go. Finally, she got the skull free. She slipped past the skeleton and ran for the door. Give me that skull! I want that skull! Give me that skull! I want that skull! Give me that skull! I want that... They watched the skeleton fall into the dark until they heard it land, the sound of bones hitting the ground. They listened some more, but they did not hear anything after that. All right, said Otilla. Time for bed. Otilla carried the skull quietly back down to the bedroom. She put him on the pillow and tucked him under the blanket. Then she put on her coat. Aren't you going to sleep too? said the skull. In a little while, said Otilla, patting the skull gently. I'll be back soon. She blew out the light and closed the bedroom door. Part 4 Otilla went to the kitchen and found a bucket, a kettle with tea leaves, a teacup, and a rolling pin. Then she went out into the night and climbed down, slowly and carefully, to where the skeleton had fallen. When she got to the bottom, she found the skeleton's bones scattered everywhere. She gathered them into the bucket. She found every single one. Otella carried the bucket of bones to a rock. She took a bone out of the bucket and put it on the rock. Then she took out the rolling pin, held it over her head, and smashed the bone. She smashed it over and over into smaller and smaller pieces until the pieces were as small as they could get. Then she took out another bone and she did it again. She did it to all of them. Then Otilla made a fire. She made it huge and hot. She melted some snow in the kettle with the tea leaves and made tea over the fire. Then she took the bone pieces and threw them into the flames. She poured her tea into the teacup and drank it as she watched the pieces burn to ash. When the fire was over, she gathered the ashes into the bucket and carried it back up the hill, back to the house. She went down to the dungeon and dropped the whole bucket into the bottomless pit. She watched it fall into the dark and listened. It did not make a sound. Then she climbed back upstairs and went to bed. Part 5. Breakfast In the morning, Otella and the skull had breakfast. Otella made tea and picked some pears from the branches. I'm sorry last night was so frightening, 
said the skull. Otilla smiled and patted the skull. It's over now, she said. Thank you for helping me, said the skull. You're welcome, said Otilla. I wonder if the skeleton will ever come back, said the skull. Otilla cut a piece of pear. It won't, she said. The skull looked out the window. It's a nice day outside, he said. Do you want to go for a walk? They went for a walk. It was a nice day outside. Otilla stopped and gave the skull a bite of pear. It went through him and fell onto the sled. Thank you, said the skull. He took another bite. You know, he said, chewing the pear. You could stay here with me if you want. Do you want me to stay? said Otilla. Yes, said the skull. I do. All right, said Otilla. The end. This is the bathroom, said the skull. Bathroom. <laughs>